Thanks, Cindy. I really appreciate uh, that introduction, and um, I certainly um, want to uh, thank Power Options for the opportunity to be here uh, today. Um, as Cindy indicated, um, Power Options has really been a great partner um, on a lot of important uh, energy issues uh, throughout New England and in Massachusetts, uh, specifically along with us. Um, I, I want to first start uh, in, in tell you a little bit about my background, and it's it's very rarely do I get to come and talk uh, to a group where I can sort of put on many different hats that I wear uh, in the Attorney General's office, but I'm the Chief of the Business and Labor Bureau, and I uh, oversee various functions in the Attorney General's office for Attorney General Coakley, which include the Energy and Telecom uh, uh, Division, which represents ratepayers, as well as our Public Charities Division. So I was thrilled to hear uh, about you know restructuring boards and good governance and, uh, and things along those lines to start off here, and certainly um, uh, those are all very important issues uh, from our perspective as really um, uh, the overseer of the public interest when it comes to uh, the public charity sector. So it's, uh, it's a, I think this is really just a great uh, opportunity uh, for us to be here and talk a little bit about what we do. So what does the Attorney General do when it comes to uh, energy? And I just want to give a brief um, uh, introduction to that before I introduce our really uh, distinguished uh, panel. Um, we represent ratepayers in state and federal utility proceedings. Um, it's we are designated by statute to do that. It's a very specific function. It's in addition to the Attorney General's general authority to um, ensure the, um, the public good and, and, uh, uh, and trust. So it's a very specific role. We have automatic standing to represent all of you uh, in state utility proceedings. And as Cindy indicated, uh, under Attorney General Coakley's leadership um, about uh, over four years ago, we really decided to take a hard look at uh, deploying some of those recess resources on a regional level. Uh, because really when we look at the th cost drivers um, of folks' overall energy bill, um, those areas dealing with transmission, wholesale energy markets can actually dwarf uh, some of the issues that we see um, on the uh, state regulatory side. Um, what we strive for is to ensure that uh, utilities uh, charge just and reasonable rates, they deliver you safe and reliable service, um, and we try to ensure that we pursue energy policy that puts the interests of customers first. We also, in deregulated markets, uh, which many of you uh, are affiliated with, we want to ensure uh, that there are adequate consumer protections um, in those markets and ensure that they operate transparently and efficiently. These are challenging times, though, and I think many of you uh, can realize that. And though I think you've probably seen the benefit of being part of a lot of power options programs um, in in really being able to manage your costs um, on the on the wholesale energy side, and probably seen some pretty good um, results coming out of the wholesale energy markets on that front. It's doubtful, though, I can really I pull the folks in this room and say your overall energy bills have decreased substantially over the last several years, despite a significant decline in wholesale energy costs. And at the same time we're experiencing that, we are seeing an increase um, in uh, other costs that really you have very less, you have less control uh, over, which include um, the charges in your distribution rates and your transmission rates. And we're going to talk about that today, and we're going to talk about some of those cost drivers, and first and foremost, make uh, and I think uh, make sure that uh, customers are aware of these things coming so they can better manage and plan, but also hopefully to get you engaged uh, with us as a consumer advocate. Um, we're really only as effective, I think, as, as, uh, as our ability to develop partnerships with Power Options and other organizations. And, um, and I, I just would echo um, the chair's sentiment in introducing the, the comments here. You know, not only, I think, should Power Options use its, um, its sort of collective power to uh, gain um, uh, very competitive um, rates and, and products out of the wholesale energy markets, but we should be using that, too, to drive energy policy. Um, and I look forward to continuing those uh, partnerships with all of you um, in the Attorney General's office and look forward to working with Cindy and her team uh, as well as many uh, of you uh, directly as we go through. One last thing I just want to plug, uh, where can you get engaged? And Carolyn O'Connor from ISO New England is going to talk a little bit more about this. About two years ago, we started a new group um, that was meant to provide a forum for customers to interact with regional um, uh, market and uh, transmission uh, uh, regulators and, um, and the ISO New England. It's called the Consumer Liaison Group. Carolyn's going to talk a little bit more about it. And it was really meant to provide an opportunity for people who don't spend their full time 
uh, trying to manage uh, energy or are directly involved in the business. They have organizations with, with, with many different missions. Um, and give them an opportunity to come in and learn and ask questions and get information. You know, everything from what's the impact of a recent tax in Connecticut going to be on Massachusetts consumers and what can we do about it. Those type of things are the type of things we try to address in this forum and Carolyn's going to give a little bit more about that. I'm going to quickly introduce the panel and let them get right into the subject matter because I, unlike the rest of the folks, I think, on the panel here, these really are the experts. I kind of, I'll give the gloss over um, uh, here today. But we have uh, Paul Peterson, who is with uh, Synapse, and uh, Paul is um, has been a. Uh, um, uh, has been with Synapse uh, for um, you know well over um, a, um, a decade, and uh, he also has service with the Vermont Public Service Board, so he understands the state regulatory perspective. Has spent time at ISO New England as well, and has a real distinguished career. Paul is a partner with us on a lot of different uh, projects uh, going forward. We also have Heather Hunt, who is the executive director of Nesco, um, which represents uh, the interests of the states. Um, and Heather will tell a little bit more about that organization um, in connection with our, uh, really our regional um, uh, transmission planning um, and other aspects of our, um, of our regional um, uh, uh, markets. And finally, we're joined by Carolyn O'Connor, uh, who is, uh, runs ISO New England's External Affairs Department, um, and again, has been a real uh, partner with all of uh, the whole entire panel of really figuring out ways to get the states and consumers engaged um, at an appropriate level uh, to ensure that their voices can be heard and that we can um, uh, have a productive discussion and um, really allow uh, both regulators and uh, ISO New England um, uh, to hear the concerns of consumers going forward. <coughs> so without that, I am going to uh, turn it over and I think uh, Carolyn is going to be up first, which will be a great overview uh, of a lot of the work that's going on at the regional level. Thanks.